This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Dr. Troy, you there? Oh, yes. All right, excellent. <laughs> we all be on the hell on. Once again, the one and only, the one that y'all demand, the true people scholar and liberator, Dr. Randy Short. How you doing today, sir? Man, I am blessed, man. And I hope everybody's doing their early voting. And um, hmm, I, I certainly hope everybody's in getting ready for this uh Blue Wave or New Slave, whatever they call it's going to happen on November 6th. You know, we still won't be free no matter who wins. Maybe we'll have some two new black governors. As long as Ben Jealous doesn't win, I'm happy. Um, I do want Espy to win. I want Gillum to win, although he's not going to do nothing for black people. And I want that chunky girl to come through somehow in Georgia. And, uh, I think that would be the optics would be good that you can be big with natural hair and not have to wash dishes and be clean the hotel room. So I'm very hoping our hotel motel, you know, we want to see this girl make it. And um, also, I hope that Negroes put a fire under her. They should have been talking about these boats long before, you know, the, the final, it, it, you know, stretch of the race. But she's ahead by one point. And wouldn't that be nice on November 7th to wake up and realize we have two black governors? That'll be awesome. That's some reconstruction but, stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember how that ended. Our ass <laughs> got beat even worse than before. So, you know, it's one. So we got that deconstruction. Mm. And I'm hoping that Ted Cruz, who looks like, you know, um, he looks like, you know, a Mexican mafia version of uh, Eugene McCarthy. <laughs> Hope he would do this, okay? I said, Joseph McCarthy. I'm sorry, Joseph McCarthy. Mm -hmm. yeah, Eugene is a different ball. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, what, 5.04 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, forgive me, but you, I'm so glad. Thank you for not letting me mess up. Um, now, you know, there's just things that are just vexing me these days. What's vexing me is this um, black men and black women, these uh, swirling sexuality coons where just everybody's got to be laid up with someone that hates them. And, um, and folks think just because they... Uh, just because you're, you're humping on someone of another race doesn't mean they like you or your people. And um, I know how sisters are so proud to have the nicest booties in the world. I know uh, when you don't have a behind like a yoga mat, it's more like, you know, a, um, I don't know, a comfort food. <laughs> um, it's so jiggly and so forth that you think that nobody from another race is with you doesn't still hate your people and you that silly for sisters and for brothers who think that they've got that magic stick with and without the ring around it <laughs> that that somehow is their uh, gangplank <laughs> <laughs> to equality and inclusion and I just want to remind all you swirlers, all you coons all you folks that think you have such strong sperm or lady majora that Somehow it's going to make people in other races who've been conditioned to hate you and your oppression is a profit center. That somehow you're going to lay down and wake up free because you're just someone of a different race. You're deluded. In fact, you're going to produce children even more deluded and confused. And you're prolonging the suffering of black folks with your genitalia and your immature, underdeveloped, Respect for your people, your ancestor, your God, and yourself. 
you know, just moving right into it, I just have to go in on what I would consider Wonder Woman until she had that baby <laughs> and she was like almost about to drop the baby in the, in the, in the <laughs> at the wedding reception or whatever. Serena Williams, I'm sorry, Broad, but you were dissed by the little so-called billionaire. Anytime that a man loves you, okay, he doesn't let you be showing pregnant when he's a billionaire at the damn wedding. And you're cool, Serena, for not realizing that he's playing you. You're a fool like the one out of three black women that are getting with white men these days. Y'all suckers. Y'all suckers. You mean to tell me you're a billionaire and people disrespect your wife and the tennis thing that you don't start a league for your own wife? If you do have $13 billion, you're a stingy motherfucker, okay? And I don't care if you made a child with her. White men made children with black women and still kept them in slavery. In case these little sisters nowadays think that having good booty and good sex and nice hair is going to make a white man see you as an equal, you are clearly deluded. So, you know, I don't care who doesn't like it, so what? Okay. And uh, I want to say that Serena should have had that man, her white husband, taking out full-page ads denouncing the tennis associations in the New York Times, Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, a Sports Illustrated, because you have money, that's what you do when you're a rich man and somebody disrespects your wife. But you're a fake-ass white man, and you've got to even fake a Jehovah Witness Watchtower Society troll who believes, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses believe that God's going to make everybody white. That's why Serena don't stand up for anything. That's why most black Jehovah Witnesses are coons. Okay, that's just a fact. They think that God's going to solve the race problem by making everybody white. Well, frankly, if God's going to make me white, I'm ready to be an atheist, Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, to hell with that, to hell with that God, to hell with that cult. If I have to be a white person, I don't want to be in that religion. But leave my ass in the second one. In fact, leave, let me be left behind like a little Christian conservative. Have a rapture and catch up. Be caught up to meet them in the air, all the little fake coons. Just disappear. In fact, that would be a millennium. Can you imagine life with no coons? <laughs> Oh my God, her, the, the, all the coons disappeared. Wake up one day and you can't find Jesse Jackson. I said, oh my God, he left this shirt with Dr. King's blood on it. Mm, I wonder if you can postmark this to hell. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and for all the coons, the brothers who think they got the magic stick, in fact, if the penis was so magical, how come sisters keep leaving y'all? So why not develop more of your humanity, your skills, your relational ability, your fathering ability? Mm-hmm. First, counting on, you know, man, I've got like, what? <laughs> I guess, they, you know, my sperm has a density of radioactive fluid. She can't leave. I mean, please, brother, it's, it's not working. And by the way, these white women see you as a science project, like a safari oddity. Mm. You know, um, I just had an experience, in fact, oh, I got to, I didn't even tell you this, I heard we were talking before the show. The woman I call um, <laughs> pol- pol- polling, polling station patty. I was working with this white woman who had these ugly, uh, they should be called hog tails. Mm -hmm. Not pigtails, hog tails. And she was running around saying, teamwork is teamwork. And this came up to me, and I just said hi and looked at her. I didn't know, I'm (laughs) I'm not interested in white females romantically. It just would like you to leave me alone. Go ahead, go over your corner and scream rape, and I don't want to hear it. And she was sitting next to 
when I was working the polling station in DC mm-hmm. at the that community center, and this guy named Mac Dang came in. I hadn't seen him in years. I had helped Mac Dang, who's a lost boy from Sudan. I helped them. I was their advocate, helped them get food, jobs, and everything. This white broad didn't know that. She was just all up on this African dude. He was disgusted, but he's being polite. But you know how people from Africa and the Caribbean, they don't stand up to white people like black Americans do. They mm-hmm. try to bl- the white folks just really dog them out. Then they come running to us. You need to tell me they like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. I, I, I thought that's your history. I'm from, I'm from another country. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. I, I don't think of myself as nigga. <laughs> I think you're the nigga. What they say is me. <laughs> right. Have you ever dealt with foreign black people? They don't yeah, want to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my God. And what's this song? Stephanie Mills sing, I feel good. I feel good all over. Yeah. One of them figure out, you sold my ass over here. What did you think you sold me to? Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> but they needed chains to send me. Get out my wow. face. Shoot, that, uh, go Donald Trump, go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I said that to kick everybody out that don't like me. Shit, it don't. Immigration ain't done a damn thing for me. I'm angry. Shoot, I'm going to put one of them little fake ass Kanye hats on the way certain people act, especially little Ethiopian cab drivers in D.C. Never want to pick you up, overcharge you. <laughs> They uh-huh. come in, they put an extra security cameras whenever somebody black comes in the store. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man, I'm talking real. You know I'm saying the truth. Yeah, hey, listen. Yeah. You go like you are making me Zionist, you racist-ass Muslim Arabs in your stores. You are making me want to have a Jewish flag out in front of my house. You have no idea. And I'm even trying to get down with Moshe Diane. And I wonder if the dick under that patch on his eye. Mm. Yeah, I said, that little racist dude. He called black people inferior back in 81. Y'all forgot. But anyway, as I was talking about this white broad, was mad that I'm not interested in her. With that big, flat, yoga mat ass. Why would I want her when they're all these sisters? I'm telling you... Uh, <laughs> Certain black women, they so shapely, they twerking when they're in church. Just sitting in their seats. You can just, <laughs> their thighs be twerking when they're sitting straight. I mean, this, this is just incredible. You know, like old glory. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but anyway, this white bra was so mad. So let me tell you, when we left the polling place, we get out to Trinidad Street, waiting for the bus to go back. If you know D.C. and you know Trinidad is next to Ivy City. And, of course, I live in Eckington, which is notorious for the old Edgewood projects. Let me tell you, I know what it's like to crawl to the kitchen table because so much shooting is going on. You just hope no bullets coming and get you. But anyway, mm-hmm. I still like the neighborhood more than it was black now. We got white women skateboarding through the alley at three in the morning. And mm-hmm. I said, God, what have you done to my world? Anyway, <laughs> just the cases just make me sick. I can't wait for it to end. But anyway, we go to Trinidad Street and we're waiting for the, uh, the D8 bus. And I'm there with Mac and Mac is saying, hey, Randy, Randy, Randy. And this brother loves me because you know, I used to look out for the brothers from Sudan. I went after the Ethiopians that were stealing money and shut their asses down. Yes, I did. It's me. It's me. Well, injured bread eating tribalistic jackasses come over here with that garbage, not wanting to work with us, being against everybody and being African and black when it suits you, but not when it benefits everybody. Please. So this brother was with me, and we get to the bus stop, and lo and behold, this white broad comes down. She didn't know where she was going, and she sees me, and she begins trembling 
Like, I'm going to bother her. You're the same person that wanted me to grope her like three, four hours before. Mm -hmm. And I just ignore her. And she runs up and literally is like almost holding on the African dude, motioning him with her face that I'm some kind of threat to her. Hmm. Cowering in fear. Mm -hmm. I didn't even say anything to this white bitch. And so when I saw that, I just turned my back like, I'm going to see you. And when the bus came, I said, Mac, our bus is here. I got on the bus and we were were out. I didn't say, (laughs) I didn't say nothing to her. And deep down inside, that broad is the kind of person that would have made a phone call to the cops that she was threatened or that someone did something or she felt unsafe and get me killed over nothing. That's part of white female privilege that dumbass black men who lift their dicks and their nutsack and their vain, stupid concept of being a sexual beast instead of a proud black king. Get them to want to lay down with these sorry trailer trash trolls. Oh my God, that was an alliteration 3T. Trailer trash trolls. That's how good saying it. <laughs> and I see all these people. I thank you. You know, I, I had a wedding I had to go to. But I sent you, I'm going to send you a picture of my cousin that got married to the white woman that looks like Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies. Mm-hmm. I, did I mention that to you? Yeah, we talked about it last time. We talked about oh. it last time. Oh, my God. Help me, Jesus. Help me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, precious Lord? Leave mm-hmm. my hair. Leave me on. Wounds <laughs> I can't stand. We black folk are weak. We get tired. We won. Through the storm, through the night. Give us a will for coon to fight. Take my hand. Precious Lord, leave me on. Right. Anyway, mm-hmm. you know, I think you have to encourage your spirit. There's so many damn coons. Oh, I can't stand coons. Oh my God, I'm gonna wash those coons right out of my head. You know, you just you have to try to like motivate yourself. And and the biggest coons are sex coons. Mm. We won't even get into the Black Lives Matter. All these new leaders, the so-called leaders, controlled opposition. They're either gays with white lovers or they're swirlers. Mm. Or they were black folks for now. You know, I was telling somebody I was at the McDonald's. You know, we have a McDonald's for all the transvestites. Young ones hang out. I wish it wasn't two blocks from my house. Damn, what you go to to get one of those poisonous sandwiches from Whack Donald's. You have to see Whack, <laughs> Whack Donald's. Let's see yeah. Whack. I mean, and Roy Kroc, he sure was a Kroc. <laughs> and you eat in a Kroc if you're in McDonald's. Anyway, and yeah. they're always neighborhood. They're always in our neighborhood, like liquor stores. Mm-hmm. Which is Miss McDonald's. Only thing worse than that is a black church for this niggas ain't doing nothing to set us free. Mm. You know, anyway, and they're like a little pedophile preacher with the belly ring, and you follow him, you know, the silly ass. I didn't say don't follow Jesus, just don't follow the effeminate one with the blue hair and blonde eyes. He may as well, since you don't know he's black. So, you know, like the way I describe to get the right one. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry. You know, I get pissed off. They get oh, off. Man. Yeah. Cool. White Jesus freak Negroes. They have to make everything white. 
you know what? You could get Negroes to believe bowel movements white, even though it's coming out their black butthole. It's still with that kid. Who is good as white, dude? Oh, I got to say this. Let me get, okay, I'll give you something I can take this so I can keep this. <laughs> then the next boot came up, like, oh, I'm a flesh out like that. Right. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> mm. And we, we, we just, you know, I'm just looking at, like, I'm looking at Kanye and Kardashian, you know, and, well, at least she doesn't have a yoga mat behind, so we'll let her have that. Even though that's cosmetic, at least she took, you know, we'll give her an A for effort, and we'll give her an F for genetics, because, you know, that's not, that boot is not real, it's not yours. Okay? And I'm just looking at, I mean, Michael Jordan, who I never liked. And I've always wondered, is it true that you were involved with Ahmad Rashad? And that's why him and Felicia broke up. Mm. Yeah, I, I said it. I said it. I don't like you, Michael Jordan. And Eddie Murphy. Damn, Eddie. You really have traded places. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? And... Miss Brewster will get all your millions when that shit ends. I don't know how to feel about that, you know. Um, and you will be the donkey from Shrek when that white girl takes all your money. As soon as she drops this baby, she owns you. Silly-ass Tiger Woods. That white booty ruined his swimming street. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm just saying, I don't see a lot of people rising to new heights with a white female. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but brothers don't even pick classy. It's like they go dumpster diving for the lowest, most unattractive white whore they can find. And don't get cocky, black women. Y'all not doing much better. You have a dude that look like a, an albino scrotum in, in, a, in a juicer. That's what y'all get with. I, I just, and, 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 and the kids are all confused. And when the black dude, forgive me, black dudes, y'all dumb as hell. You know, divorce courts is rigged against you when you mess with the black woman and the shit goes split still. What the hell you think they're going to do when a white woman leaves your ass? And I saw this black dude who wants to leave his woman because he got the girl's hair braided and she thinks it's ugly. Nigga, she thinks you ugly. She thinks your people are ugly. Mm -hmm. You know what? She wouldn't mind seeing your penis on the cover of Time Magazine, this man of the year. But that's all she saw. And in fact, maybe all you saw was that, you know, that she's not a black woman. You know, I just keep saying this, and it just makes me sick, but I'm telling you, as this country gets more racist, I wrote this up on Facebook. You're going to see more black men who mess with white women swirling, getting shot, getting beat, getting killed. And maybe that's what it'll, it'll take. Did you hear about the little Negro? I think he was having a menage a trois with white women, and then they, they said it was rape. Yeah, the football player, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm so sick of dumbass black athletes. I mean, they're the lowest of the low. You're not a Muhammad Ali. You're not an Arthur Ashe or Jackie Robinson. Just a damn coon racehorse, most of y'all. No consciousness, no commitment. And then when y'all do stand up, y'all on your fucking knees. God help me. Give me a break, Jesus. Mm. And and your leader had to be half white and raised by white people. Why didn't somebody jet black stand up? Hmm. You understand me? Mm. I, I don't even I don't even pay attention to pro sports. I have no respect for it. Haven't. Um, I'm going to just say something that you may not be aware of. <clears throat> In many countries. Professional sports teams were the basis of nationalistic movements to prepare young men to be military and political leaders to liberate their people. 
sports for black folks is getting to be basically uh, greyhound dogs and uh, racehorses for rich white capital. Doesn't have a goddamn thing to do about lifting up their people. I don't like pro sports. I hate it. I hate it. I did like when black people had their own teams. These folks would rather be slaves, disrespected, having CTE, when they could pool their money and create their own league. Who would want to watch a bunch of white spasses play basketball or any other sport? That's why they integrated it, because nobody's interested in watching white folks do much of anything. But you know what? Leave it to Coons to find some way to give their energy, time, soul, and everything to people that hate them. Back to swirling. <clears throat> that dude, the one that died, the soul train. Don Cornelius got with the Russian porn queen, a Russian Jewish porn queen, may have killed him. Now you think Don Cornelius, he had to get with the woman. I had a picture of him. They took it down where this woman was giving oral sex on glory holes. A glory hole is a place, it's a, a hole in the wall where you stick your penis. And it's meant for people to have anonymous sex. Mm -hmm. That's who Don Cornelius got with. He had money. Now, black men make all these comments about black women and they end up dead with these white broads. Hmm. Uh, swirlers. Forgive me. Cousin Bill Cosby. Dude. What a damn letdown. I love you, but damn, what a fucking letdown. That Dr. Spock looking thing with the Ronald McDonald afro. I mean, <laughs> Camille looks better at chemo than that white scum, drug addict, lesbian that you were with. And now we have to split hairs over whether you did or did not do stuff with all these white trolls out here. Some of them black. Damn. Let's do some more. Name another one. We could just, I mean, the black athlete. Remember Herschel Walker? Mm-hmm. Did yeah. the white woman draw his money yet? <laughs> That's a good question. Hey, I remember she's... Michael Strahan, when he had got divorced, you know, she took him to the cleaners. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not a cleaners. These Negroes know that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you the thing I hate about uh, college football. It's a nigga sobbing. <laughs> I love my coach. Have you seen people in the Heisman Trophy they be slobbering over these white men? They're like, get off me. Don't touch me, nigga. Oh, my God. I hope he doesn't have AIDS with his tears. He screwed all the cheerleaders. And these guys are just, when you see the black men on sports, they're just begging, crying, and scraping. Mm. It's disgusting. I hate it. I don't like watching it. You haven't seen that little, you see them and they're taking pictures and none of the white coaches can dress. <laughs> it's, just where they can, and it's like they go shopping at the homeless Goodwill. <laughs> And they're the ones that all these guys look up to. I mean, I respect the come and play for this coach. Mm -hmm. That's a white dude who's about four nine, yelling at a black man who's seven feet tall, and but mm -hmm. you no, know, I mean, he has everything but a slave with him. The guy for like saying he's such a great coach. I mean, I never learned to read, but I always wanted to be a slave for Oklahoma, <laughs> <laughs> and and. And the most disgusting people are all the dumbass black men that think watching people destroy their bodies, <laughs> give all their money to other people like the TV networks and the folks who own the teams, the franchises, and these folks aren't finishing school. They don't even know how to eat a pretzel after four years of college. Mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we accept this as black manhood, something to aspire to. 
And I'm not knocking the money that the people make. I'm glad they're making more than I have, but damn, I'll be richer than them once they get with the white girl. Well, let me just do this real fast and talk mm-hmm. about this live ass athlete. You know, I went to the University of Virginia where all the little Nazis were marched and ran over that ditch over in downtown mall mm-hmm. in Charlottesville. Okay. Heather Hayer. I feel sorry for her. Okay. But anyway, I had I was publishing an independent black newspaper called The Fist when I was a student at UVA. And the reason I had to publish uh, my independently was I wrote a I wrote some editorials that I got I was writing as a, a black conservative, and when I started, you know, changing it to begin to do what I really wanted to do. You know, I wrote something that they would feel comfortable with. Mm. And then when Rich Up started doing this, <laughs> I wrote uh, In Search of the Ugly American, Just Consult Your Nearest White Male. It's the title of the article. Mm. Did you like that? In Search of the Ugly American, Just Consult You. And what happened was the uh, Cavalier Daily, which is a paper at UVA, and the other one, uh, University Journal, I think it was called, um, nobody could print anything with my name on it. And one of the things that the reason that they didn't print it, the staff rebelled at, at the University Journal. I think it's called the University Journal. It's been so long. It's been 24 years, 26 years, maybe, when I wrote it. Uh, no, 20, 25 years. But anyway, <laughs> what happened... I wrote in search of the uh, the ugly American. I started talking about the hypocrisy of this dude who got mad about people celebrating Black History Month, and I got to a point where where I said in my article, "Why do people call all Black women whores when the girls that do all the tricks for the athletes at University Hall are white?" And the staff rebelled. They would not publish the article. Hmm. What the, what I was saying was is that the white girls were screwing all the black guys at the uh, place where the football and basketball players were. Mm-hmm. And if they had published that, it would have literally caused the school to shut the newspaper down. So instead, they, these people shut me down. But at UVA, the black guys, a lot of them weren't allowed to even be with black girls. They would furnish white girls like uh, like condoms or Ben Gay or socks or uh, jockstrap. So if anybody became big or famous, they would be with that white woman to take their wealth away from the minute, you know, they dropped a baby or she was ready to move on, okay? When she got tired of her pet gorilla, she could go back to, you know, a regular white dude. And these girls were encouraged to screw. In fact, certain places they call them sunshine girls. These are girls who screw the black athletes. Hmm. The stupid-ass black man who thinks his penis is a magic key to heaven doesn't realize that that white girl, they don't mind treating her as a canopy or a party favor because the money that they make off of their sports programs finance the schools. You're not special. You're basically a commodity to be traded like a pork belly or an orange future. Mm-hmm. And speaking of orange future, I'm thinking about Trump. Um <laughs> 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 um, these these brothers have been alienated from the sisters at the school and they're surrounded by white women and are given cars and all this other kind of stuff and they begin to see themselves as better and different from the other black people. The only significant thing that I've seen black college athletes do was that thing at Missou back in 2015. Other than that, black college athletes, as an aggregate, suck. 
And the same could be said for the pro athletes. Okay, I'm, I guess I'm happy that you have millions of dollars, you use lots of dope, you have orgies and so forth. I mean, and well, some of us don't have orgies and millions of dollars, and maybe we, we don't need the orgies, we'll take the money. Uh, but our, 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 most of you leave the league broke, they gamble, they throw $50,000 a night at strippers. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And isn't that disgusting? Mm. And, and 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 everybody knows the best strippers are black. I assure you, the strippers are white. They get big bucks. You know how that is. <laughs> Come on, brothers. We think black pussy should be free, and white bad inferior uh, X grade white cooch that white men don't want should be given. You know, platinum, platinum <laughs> express card. I, I mean, there's nothing like a black man that hates black women. There's nothing like a black man with no dignity. And there's nothing like a clean female feminist who sees like a white dude who looks like a retarded California, an albinized California raisin as some sort of prince to behold. <laughs> you know, because, you know, it's like, what's her name? Dorothy Dan just got the white dude that was beating her ass and took her money. This happens to black women. They, they shoot. They say they can do bad by yourself. You can also do bad with a, cave, a caveman. And when he hit with the club, it's not like when you lie on the black man when he comes to visit the child when you break up. And there's a camera, security camera showing that the father was, was trying to break in the apartment. And the cop still says, well, brother, uh, you just need to leave. She's called us. You don't get to see your child this weekend. Right? You know how the sisters do that bullshit with the children, make the kids hate the father? Mm-hmm. No. When you get with the white dude, he'll steal the kids. He'll be fast. The cops won't come. Um, and, and so a lot of sisters, in fact, let me tell you, we're going we're gonna to have this economic downturn. In fact, I almost want this shit to happen. I'm so tired of all the faking coons. Do you realize, you want to see something get strange? White people are a lot like Amorosa, okay? Uh, They have one fear, running out of money. When white people run out of money, Mm -hmm. their asses get strange real fast. Mm -hmm. If a white man's with a black woman, and she's making good money, and he loses his job. I lost my job. And so I lost my too. What? Well, you better sew your ass, or I'm gonna beat the shit on you, you black cunt. Why would you pick the same week I lost my job? Do you know her? Right. Mm. <laughs> and a lot of sisters are they are ready. You know, black men have to be cool. When the cop has a gun pointed at you in the car with your kids, you have to be, like, cool. White guys don't know how to be cool. To them. They don't have to. They're white. When when this stuff gets rough, these guys crack up. A lot of these interracial fantasies, these little silly sisters think that y'all found the perfect man. Sure you did. In fact... I just hope that Nathan Merkel lives another 10 years. I hope, you know, that they just use her to breed some new kids and do a Diana on their ass. Um, Because, you know, isn't it interesting? All the folks are excited about the light-skinned woman getting with the white man. Had that been a black man getting with the white woman? Had it been a, a princess getting with a black dude? None of the sisters would have wanted to watch that. Oh, he's okay. Look at him. <laughs> Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. He's gay. I know he's gay because so why he marry her, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but double standard now. We do. We do. We have a double standard. And we need to get rid of that. We, You know, it's interesting. You know, if a black man gets with a white woman, oh, the world's going to end. When, when, a, when a, a black woman gets a white man, it's like she's one Powerball mm-hmm. or Powerballs. But um, in fact, the grass isn't greener. 
You know, there was a little story of uh, a white gentleman up in Massachusetts who had an incinerator. He had killed and had roasted. One of those was a black woman. And so I think a whole lot of sisters need to understand they don't know what they're dealing with. And the same thing with black men. You don't know their father, their uncle. Some of them don't want them, don't want you in their family. They don't recognize a marriage. Not to a barbarian, not to a subhuman, right? They don't like the kids. So, you know, when you get with them, the family basically, you know, when you, well, a marriage is bringing two families together as a union, not just two people. Which means if you get with the crackers family race, that support, money, all that, that's gone. You lost that. Right? You did. Mm-hmm. That's that's not a step ahead. They talk about the disparity and in income for blacks and whites, so that doesn't help if you if you're you getting with the person who has money <clears throat> but yet their family has money, but you're not going to get it because you're black. Let's take an example. You know Johnny Carson had a black grandson, right? Uh, Johnny Carson is a talk show host? Yes. Uh-uh, I didn't know that. Okay. You know that there was no money for the black child. They could forget that. Mm. No. He, did, he did the opposite of John McCain there. Yeah. There's no money. And so, economically, a lot of folks see getting with whites as a a step ahead. Well, typically, whites with money marry other whites with money. Okay, and and dumbass black folks, in particular, athletes and so-called stars, they get with white folks who don't have money. <laughs> mm-hmm. So stupid. God. It's hard to respect dumb people, especially dumb black people. At some point, you have to get smart, right? Right. And why not marry a rich African if somebody with some, something going on, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, swirling. And the kids, <clears throat> you know, the confused children. Have you ever gone to school with someone you knew they were biracial? when there's a girl because her hair was always fucked up. <laughs> white mother, you know, mm. <laughs> the white mother's so confused. She gave the girl a whole cut. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry if you buy racial, you know, it's true. Your mother don't know what the hell to do with your hair. I mean, you look like Phyllis Diller on crack. And, 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 and you, you know, I mean, don't know what to do. They know what to do. And they don't talk about your history. They don't know it. And probably don't want to know it. I just love your father. I just love your father's general. I didn't sign on for all this great stuff. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a sellout. It's a betrayal. And I'm not saying that you, you can't love someone. That's not what I'm saying. I have met some genuine love. It wasn't jungle fever. And normally when the people get married like that, they join your community. <laughs> They're with black people, right? I've seen such couples. But I don't see that these days. I tend to see sisters who've given up on black men Intentionally, first and foremost, because you meet well-educated black men that are bright, and sisters give them hell. Uh, they don't want a black dude too smart. They want a dumb dude so they can be the intelligent person in the household. And there are a lot of jackass sisters like that. So they get a dumbass man, and they have dumbass kids that keep them in court all the, the rest of their life and make children early. They start making kids when they're 12. <laughs> <laughs> mm, wow. But then, because they got a dude that was dumb, and that dude got like a criminal gene or whatever, stupid dumb black, you know, <laughs> full mm-hmm. of the jail, 
that that dude had. So, you know, maybe he was good in bed, but damn. Would would you want to get with a woman and the kids are like, they're like criminal prone. They're like stealing Cheerios for day two. And you're like, damn, this is going to be good a few years from now. Right? They, they, they go out of their way to ignore quality black men. But they get mad when they see a black man with the white woman. Like I've heard someone say, well, you seem like the kind of black man to be in a white woman. What it really meant is you're intelligent, you, you're polished, you travel. Um, and, and they're projecting, I wouldn't go out with you because you've got something to offer. <laughs> so what I do is I see you're in the white woman to cover up for the fact that I don't like black men to be accomplished. I don't want to respect a black man. I don't, a black man being intellectual doesn't mean anything to me. In fact, um, I was out at this uh, film premiere and I was talking to a couple of women, to a couple of sisters, and my cousin made a remark. I had a PhD, something. I had been talking to this woman for 90 minutes. I never mentioned anything like that because I don't care so much about PhDs. Mm-hmm. I want to find out. And you know what that stupid ass woman said? Okay. Don't lead with don't lead with that. Mm. Get that? I didn't even. She snapped at me. I didn't even bring it up. I didn't tell him to say that. I didn't encourage him to say it. Now, mind you, this sister may have a master's degree. I think she, no, she just had a bachelor's. I wasn't trying to impress her. I was talking about all kinds of stuff. She would never say that to a white man. Mm. If he had a PhD, it would be, okay, oh, that's great. But to say to him, don't lead with that. After I've been talking to you for an hour and a half, and I asked you about your education, your background, all this, the minute I mentioned mine, I'm trying to impress her. Actually, I didn't mention it. Someone else mentioned it. They attacked it, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, what's interesting is her friend, <laughs> who's like maybe 15% black or 10% black, was, I mean, they actually have called me a few times and whatever. It's quite interesting told me that this sister was mad because I had engaged in a conversation with this person who's learning about their black roots, even though they're not culturally black as a person. And this sister was mad at me for speaking to this person. Mind you, don't leave with your education. And when I was talking to her, she told me my hands were too close to the other woman's face and my hands were like two and a half feet away. Do you get where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. Now, let me tell you what the issue is. Broad is probably bisexual. And Broad has problems with black men. And she's one of those Greek letter societies. Delta's oftentimes the most difficult ones of all. What is that about? You know, <laughs> and I'm serious. Yeah, I said it. I mean, some of them are like kind of harder than a, 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 what's that thing called? A center block. I mean, why not be feminine? In fact, we need to talk about that real fast. Being masculine is a turn off black women. Being overweight, and and yes, I mean, 40 pounds is too much overweight. So when it's 120 pounds, please don't say you're sexy when you wear spandex, okay? (laughs) Okay. When you look like a sponge, it's not sexy, okay? Except for if you want to scrub a shower or do a floor or whatever, okay? Maybe, you know, some speak and span, you, maybe you can turn someone on, but not when you too, you know, no, no. Mm-hmm. If it's good on William Barber, don't look good on you, okay? <laughs> and so be in shape, or at least be presentable and be feminine. And and if masculine is the, the platform, a lot of sisters are wearing combat boots and men's drawers and stuff. Well, if a dude wants a man, there's so many drag queens out here. I mean, starting at age 10, where I am, damn. Hmm. I mean, I don't know where they have Barbie makeup and shit. I'm like, damn. <laughs> What's going on? 
if a man wants a man, he'll get one. Okay, and all the penis envy in the world will never give you a penis, sister. So if you're trying to be a dude, you're going to fail. Vice versa. Brothers, please. Like the sagging, you know. First, it's just oh, it's awful. But brothers, be a man for real. Don't have more earrings than your woman. Hey, that's short. Yes, sir. Hey, I don't know what have you said. Uh, don't have more earrings than your woman. Then it cut off. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we know who controls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, you shouldn't you shouldn't use lip gloss. Okay. It's not for men. Okay. Nail polish, even if it's clear. I'm sorry, brothers. And any woman that wants to wear near nail polish, okay, before you know it, she's going to want to put a strap on on the do you in the booty. And you need to just head her off at the pass. Okay. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yes. I mean, in fact, I've, at Howard, that was a big thing. These girls like getting guys in the booty unless you, you know, please, no. Be a man. Okay. And I'm not saying that you have to lift weights, but, you know, be as male as you can. And your hair, I mean, I'm not saying it, but what is it about thing about all the dudes needing super long hair? Mm-hmm. Like hair all the way down their back. The sisters don't even have hair down their back half the time. Have you noticed all these dudes that have all this hair? Mm-hmm. If, <laughs> if you spend that much time on your hair, you probably don't have time for her. Um, shoulder length. It doesn't need to be down near behind. You can, but just do you need it down near behind? Mm. Are you, you do you see these dudes and wonder why everyone and some folks have hairdos? I'm sorry. It's if sometimes you can't tell if it's a man or a woman from behind the hairdo. Try to try to be noticed as a man, okay? We have enough trannies out here confusing people. We have a lot of folk reaching in people's jaws. They, they go get kiwi fruit or peach, and it's a bunch of grapes, and it really makes folks mad. That's how a lot of trannies out here get killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, and see, half the time the dudes don't want to admit themselves that they could get turned on by a tranny. That's all they have. And I'd have to just probably hire stupid. And, and why would you get direction when you know you're a man? That's going to make that dude angry. And don't do it in their apartment of all places, you know. And and they may be ready to cheat in their wife's bed with the woman, but not with the dude. Okay, so that's, I'm just talking, you know, I'm telling the truth her. And as for the LGBTQ black folks, you are traitors anyway, okay? <laughs> I just have to call it what it is. You know, I always say James Baldwin could tell the truth with the white demons in his mouth. What happened to y'all? Huh? How come nothing matters but sexuality? Not safe drinking water, not mass incarceration, not that our people lose their housing, not Africa being taken over by the Chinese, and they're not even giving out fortune cookies anymore. And if you do get one, it's basically nigga get out of Africa is in the fortune cookie. All right. Um, we, you know, y'all going to get a water being the biggest traders of all times. It's probably in the mail. If I send one, it's going to be COD because y'all got to pay for something. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm just sick of y'all. I'm sick of Black Lives Matter. Y'all are all coons and traitors to the community. I can't wait for black folks to get tired of y'all and turn on y'all. And I won't, I mean, I'm not talking about necessarily doing anything to anybody, but just philosophically, you know, Malcolm X said, if you can't go to Africa, return to Africa in your mind. Okay. If we can't make stuff go back to like it used to be in the 70s, at least to our minds, let us be committed 
to being black men and black women, even if everybody doesn't want to join us. Mm. And, uh, oh, my God, I'm trying to think. Come on, give me some spoilers. Oh, O.J. Simpson. Mm -hmm. He hasn't learned anything, you know. Um, He's just the most disgusting swirl of all times. Hands down, O.J., you're nothing. You never will be anything. And he had a big um, maybe being head anyway. I mean, I got surprised. In fact, he had a good black wife who who should have made some money dogging him. I would have if I were her. But, But she didn't do it. Um, just trying to think. Come on, give me. Oh yeah, well, I want to ask you about. I mean, the situation with Phil from the Alive show. Like, people got mad at him. Mm-hmm. Like okay. a white mannequin or something like that. I mean, I want to ask you about why there's a lot of. It's like a lot of black men who are uh, race first men, or they they love black folks. They tend to go for women from other races or well, outside the group. I'll tell you what James Farmer of Court told me. Mm -hmm. Most of the black men that I know that are in the movement or have been in the movement have been divorced one time Mm -hmm. because a black man and black woman live in parallel universes. I have seen black men that get become active and their wives are basically capitalist, greedy, gold diggers. And they don't want their husband helping everybody. They just want, they want to get with the man who is educated and they want him to just make money and live comfortably. Mm-hmm. No struggle, challenge. I just want to have the stuff. <clears throat> you see, it's a rare sister that's a movement woman. I'm going to just say this. I don't care how it strikes folks. These days, most sisters are coons. I mean, I see all this blonde hair. I see all of this weave. I see a lot of female cooning. Okay? They have a, a, a Afrocentric body and a Eurocentric mind. And so a black man that's committed to his people, that don't mean nothing. That's not going to get a Mercedes or a Lamborghini. Not going to get in a gated community. In the words of one sister, I remember saying, um, I can't be with the man that's not trying to make me live large. So, principled, sincere black men willing to sacrifice, they're not necessarily going to have a lot of money or earning potential because the system's going to punish them and retaliate against them. These sisters got with men because they want to live good. They want to live the rich life. Thank you.